If you look for it, you will find it. Look for what? Look for the good in your brothers. And when you find it, don't be afraid to acknowledge it. Now, we all know that we should do that, but we do have to fight the tendency to uh, view others a bit critically at times. Uh, sometimes we question their motives. Uh, maybe because we're just a little bit jealous. Now think about that brother in your congregation who is just an excellent public speaker. When he's scheduled to give a talk, the hall is full, and everybody raves about his talks, even your wife. <laughs> Yours, not so much. The show-off, he doesn't impress me. Or what about this? You're working in a department with one of those annoying people who is very efficient. He's never late, never misses a day's work. He gets a tremendous amount done in a day, and he almost never makes a mistake. Doesn't impress me either. Mr. Perfect, he's trying to make the rest of us look bad. Well, there we go, questioning someone's motives. Now, can we look for the good in Mr. Perfect? Can we see, give him a benefit of the doubt? Maybe his parents trained him to offer the very best gift he could to Jehovah. In other words, if he could do more, he was expected to do more because he wanted his gift to be the very best gift that he could possibly give. Now, come to think of it, he never uh, criticizes your gift to Jehovah. He just wants to give his very best gift to Jehovah. That's the way he approached the pioneer ministry, and that's the way he approaches his Bethel service. So now, what do you do with Mr. Perfect? Do you tell him to slow down? You're making the rest of us look bad? Well, if he did that, he'd be giving a substandard gift to Jehovah. And Jehovah expects and deserves the very best. So what do you do? You acknowledge his gift. You really get a lot done in a day. I wish I had your stamina. And what about Mr. Showoff, the outstanding speaker? Jehovah has given you a wonderful gift. You use it well. Now, was that hard? Elders occasionally have to evaluate brothers for privileges of service. And while we're not blind to the shortcomings of our brothers, we try to keep the discussion mainly positive. Now, sometimes we have to discuss a shortcoming, a negative. But are we talking about one isolated incident, or is it a pattern? It's true that if we make it a habit to look on the positive side, we'll be disappointed sometimes. But it's better to be disappointed occasionally than to develop a cynical or resentful attitude toward our brothers. Let's consider a scriptural example where questioning the motives of a brother could have left, left, uh, led to disaster. It's in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17. And a little bit of background, a little bit of the setting. Jesse has sent his youngest son, David, to visit his three oldest brothers in the army. And uh, Israel is having a face-off with the Philistines. And when he arrives, David hears Goliath challenge any man of the house of Israel to a battle to the death. 
there are no volunteers. Now David is a man of faith, and he can't believe it. He says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should taunt the battle lines of the true God? Now his oldest brother, Eliab, is listening, and we pick up the account in verse 28. So that's 1 Samuel chapter 17, and we'll read verse 28. When his oldest brother, Eliab, heard him speak to the men, he became very angry with David and said, Why have you come down? And with whom did you leave those few sheep in the wilderness? I well know your presumptuousness and the bad intentions of your heart. You came down just to see the battle. Now, what did we learn about Eliab's personality from this verse? Not much. You recognize that as a trick question. We just met the man. We don't know very much about him. And we certainly aren't going to pass judgment on somebody over one isolated incident, are we? Now the question is this. Was this a one-off for Eliab? Or was he always like that? Was this an isolated incident, or was it a pattern? And when analyzing the situation, ask yourself this. Was there ever an occasion when you got so frustrated with your fleshly brother that you said something awful, something that you had to apologize for later? Well, did that make you a terrible person? So the question is, is this a one-off? Is it isolated or is it a pattern? Uh, these are things that we really need to apply when it comes to our relations with our brothers and sisters. Don't write somebody off on the basis of one incident. But we can say that on this occasion, Eliab was wrong. He questioned David's motives, and he wasn't nice about it. But that's not the worst of it. Suppose that David had listened to Eliab. Slow down. You're making the rest of us look bad. What might have happened? Suppose David had said, You're right, Eliab. I am a bit arrogant. Now, who do I think I am that I could fight this mighty man of war? Well, that could have had disastrous consequences for Israel, at least temporarily. So what's the lesson? Don't discourage anyone from giving his best to Jehovah, even if his best is better than your best. Now let's take another isolated incident from the life of Eliab and say something positive about the man. Let's look for the good in Eliab. First Samuel 22 1 Samuel 22 and verse 1. It says, So David went from there, escaping to the cave of Adullam. So David is running away from Saul. When his brothers and his father's entire house heard of it, they went down there to him, his brothers, including Eliab. So what's the point? Well, when he was needed, Eliab was there for you. He could be counted on. And later, one of David's sons married one of Eliab's daughters. Oh, wait a minute. Say that again. Uh, David ran away from Saul? He didn't run away from Goliath, did he? But he ran away from Saul. Jehovah's Spirit must have indicated when David should stand and fight and when he should run and hide. Sounds like material for another talk. Well, it'll help our blood pressure 
If we could learn to give a positive spin to potentially negative situations. Maybe you've run into this. You're walking down the hall, following closely behind someone. He goes through the door and lets the door slam right in your face. Is he self-centered or just lost in thought? How do you choose to characterize that incident? Is the public speaker a show-off? Or on this occasion, is he simply trying a bit too hard to be enthusiastic? Is the brother being picky? Or is he trying to be thorough? Standoffish and proud? Or just shy? Now, one day, some of you brothers are going to have positions of responsibility and you're going to be dealing with people. And when that happens, remember this. Many joys are denied those who keep looking for mistakes. But the one who sees the good in others will have a feast constantly. Remember that. And may Jehovah bless you richly. We love you.